Hello, nerdlings. Hello. How are you guys today? We are going to do something that we haven't done in quite a little while. We have another board game pickup for you today. Yeah, we don't get to show them off too much, but as you can tell, we do like our board games. Uh, and the shelf does go all the way down and probably a little out of frame as well. Yeah. So, the first thing we have for you, as you know, we are from Springfield. And so, I picked this up at Walmart, not any kind of flea market or anything. We have Springfield Opoly. And real quick, if you didn't know that we're from Springfield, we're from Springfield. We're from Springfield. <laughs> uh, yeah, Springfield is kind of like the little brother in Missouri to St. Louis and Kansas City, so. <laughs> or are we Simpson Springfield? Oh. You don't know which Springfield we're from. Yeah. Except you already told Missouri. So. That's right. <laughs> Doesn't matter, it's still Springfield. <laughs> anyway. We know Homer Simpson. <laughs> I do like to collect monopolies, but not just the typical monopolies, though like the state ones or the travel ones are a lot of fun. So obviously I couldn't pass up the Springfield Monopoly. They did one a little while ago, I, I believe in the 90s, I could I could be wrong, um, but I this is one that came out uh, last year, and so I, I had to get the, um, the updated version with all the newer... Um, properties on it. Now, on that note, I would like to add, it is funny because we saw the 90s one before and I think some of the businesses are gone. Oh yeah, now. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, we actually took a vacation and uh, the vacation home we were in had, um, was it like dot .com Monopoly or yes. something? And literally every single one of the businesses was already gone and out of business. <laughs> it was really kind of funny. And we had, this was the vacation we took was like five years ago. But obviously the Monopoly was from like 10 or 15 years ago, but it was really funny how quickly these things go out of date. The other kind of funny thing about this one is something I guess you want to check even your brand new games because we got this one brand new and sealed. And I took the seal off of it so I could show you guys the board and everything. I'm missing a lot of pieces to this game. I pick up so many games at flea markets and they have all their pieces. A brand new one from Walmart and it's missing the property cards and in this game they call it um, contingency and big fun instead of the chance and community, community chest. chest. Those cards are missing. So, so yeah, super brand, fun. Brand new board game, <laughs> already missing pieces. So the, the way these Opoly games go that are city oriented it's um it's an advertisement thing they go around to the local businesses and they ask do you want to be on a monopoly board and then depending on what property you purchase for your business is a different amount of advertisement business so that's why not like everything in, or something that's iconic isn't necessarily always on these from like because i've got a kansas city one i've got a vegas one but people have to pay to be on these so this one is um basically an advertisement for springfield and so, unless you're from Springfield, you might not know some of these properties, but there's some fun things on here. I'm sure a bunch of you do. They've they've been uh, going around. Mother's Brewing Company. That's yes. a, a pretty up-and-coming brew co. That's, uh, they're up in St. Louis and Kansas City now and kind of getting out there. Uh, Missouri Sports Hall of Fame. We've got Dickerson Park Zoo. Pythian Castle. That one's always a fun one. That's... Um, it's not really a castle. They kind of built this house to look like a castle. And it's been multiple things. It's been uh, a convalescent home. It's been, uh, now I believe it's like rented out for churches and weddings and stuff. But it's it's been a couple of different little things. We've got, let's see, Springfield Art Museum. What's that one? How about this one? Oh, has everybody heard of Cashew Chicken? Springfield, Missouri, in case you didn't know, a little history lesson. Springfield, Missouri is the home of cashew chicken from Leong's. Is it just Leong's? I think it's just called Leong's. Leong's. He invented it, and then it spread like wildfire, and it's everywhere. So, yeah. And if you don't know, <laughs> just real quick, uh, cashew chicken is breaded, fried Yes, it's chicken. fried, breaded chicken. Uh, usually bite-sized pieces, maybe a little bigger than bite size. It's served over rice, typically, obviously, with cashews and green onions. And then it's got this... It's uh, like an oyster sauce. Kind yeah, of, like a rich a brown. brown oyster sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, some places have like a thicker sauce. It's almost like a gravy texture. Other places it's more like a dipping sauce and it's a little uh, runny, a little more watery. Some have... that we have, We've had some where it's kind of a teriyaki sauce consistency. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of the same color as teriyaki sauce, but not near... It's not sweet. 
Um, so if you've never tried cashew chicken and you go somewhere, make sure you get... A lot of times if you're outside of Springfield, they'll call it Springfield style cashew mm -hmm. chicken because they do have a chicken with cashews dish at most places and that's different. That's usually not breaded, but it's really good. Then um, we, <laughs> I'm not sure if it is actually the world's largest pork, but uh, that's on here. It's It was in front of a restaurant for a while and I think several different businesses have bought it and put it in front it's of It's moved around place. a little yeah. bit in town. Yeah, it's called the world's largest pork, but I seriously doubt that that is. And then we've got downtown Springfield. I said Springfield Art Museum. And then we have Nathaniel Green uh, Memorial Park. That one's really neat. It has a Japanese uh, stroll garden in it and a butterfly, like, uh, not conservatory. What are those? Like a, like a protection thingy. I, I'm losing my words here. <laughs> but anyway. In place of the railroads is uh, there are streets. So they're kind of well-known streets in the town of Springfield. Mm -hmm. Commercial Route 66 because it comes through Springfield. Springfield is actually the birthplace of Route 66. Sun, Sunshine Street and then Glenstone Avenue. And each of them is represented by our town's skyscraper, the Hammonds Tower. Yes, the tallest building in our uh, city, and I believe it's like 10 stories tall. <laughs> I don't think it's really that tall. <laughs> but anyway, super fun, and the tokens aren't really anything really all that special. There's really, unless someone else knows the meaning behind these, I tried to find it and I couldn't. There's a heart, a giant smile, a big hand, I don't know, hamburger helper, did it come from here? I'm not sure. We have a dog, a tennis shoe, and a pretzel. So, <laughs> those are the, the, the fun pieces. And then the houses, or houses, hotels, they're just squares. They're not even in the shape of houses. And then keys of some sort. Um, haven't tried to play this yet. Obviously, like I said, we just... Obviously, we can't. Yeah, we can't right now. We're going to have to go into Walmart and and uh, be like, hey, what's the deal here? Well, there's the moat. We do have a fun uh, food truck fest, which is kind of odd because we don't really have a whole lot of public transportation like some of the bigger cities. But we have this one little tiny vacant lot that a bunch of food trucks park in. And it's called the food truck lot. And they do like a fun little festival. And then we've got Ozark Empire Fair. That's our local fair that comes once a year. So it's a lot of fun. There's, you know, some neat stuff on here. But uh, there is Springfield Oddly for you guys. In case any of you locals wondered if you should get it or not. Let me tell you, if you get it, check it right away. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that one. The next thing we have is, you know how much I love my Clue games and how I love to collect Clue anytime we go. We've got a very, yeah, if you couldn't tell, we have a very old clue. I don't know if it's the original, like, first run clue or not, but uh, it's a pretty old one. And uh, we'll show some pictures of it. Um, the, the front box is really cool. But uh, here's the board. Super super old kind of watercolor pastel colors on here but it's all the same the typical stuff you got the conservatory billiard room library study hall lounge dining room kitchen ballroom and then the giant blue area but uh, it's really I, I really like it I like the uh, the the look of it and then the pieces are are pretty funny because they're not proportioned at all we have the stereotypical candlestick, the wrench, the knife, which looks more like a dagger, and <laughs> the rope, and then, whoa, Nelly! <laughs> the gun is rather large. All these other pieces are about the normal size, but you can see the gun <laughs> is, a bit, is a bit large. And then we have the same typical people. We've got... Mr. Green, Colonel Mustard, who kind of looks like, uh, who's that guy from, uh, Gone with the Wind? <laughs> Miss Scarlet as a blonde. She's not typically a blonde. And then Professor Plum. And then we have Mrs. White, who is, uh, 
looks kind of like the cook this time rather than the maid. But I do believe only in America she's the maid. I do believe the European clue, she's actually a normal guest. I do believe. We have Miss Peacock, not in her typical blue outfit. And obviously the candlestick. The knife looks like a butter knife on the cards this time. Rope, wrench, gun. Oh, we are. I'm missing the lead pipe. Oh, no, I'm not. I just forgot to pick it up. There's a the lead pipe. And then your typical room cards, just as always. But uh, I thought this one was kind of neat. Like I said, it's an, one of the older ones, and I don't have one of this age. The tokens are the very stereotypical type tokens that you would mm -hmm. see in a lot of board games, uh, including like Sorry, except these are wooden tokens instead of the plastic ones that we typically see. So that's kind of neat because they're just the painted wood. Yeah, this was, I, I wanted to look at the board because I knew there was writing down here. It's This is from the 1960s and I believe my oldest clue that I had was um, from the 70s. Uh, so this is pre my growing up clue. And we still have some sheets in here actually yeah. too. I wonder if they did it well. No, they didn't do what we did because we used to copy them on the copy machine so they, we didn't have to use them. They have been used though. <laughs> some have. Yep, and here's the the solution cards go in here. So, you know, I mean, it's it's just like Clue we grew up with, except it just looks slightly different. So I always enjoy getting these because, like I said, you know, they change either the way the characters look or the tokens or the board quite frequently. Obviously, so, the art for the yes. characters and then the rooms on the board, it's very much of the style of the time. Very kind of comic comic strip that was in the yes. newspapers it's what it kind of if you especially if you look at this right here i'm gonna <laughs> try to hold that a little closer it's very much comic strip looking and it's each one of the characters searching for clues in the room but kind of along what she was saying as far as collecting the older board games or older versions of the same game it's always fun and fascinating mm -hmm. to see where these came from you know kind of where they got their start and how they've uh, how they differed throughout the years. And it's my way of preservation, just like we preserve the, the discs and everything, the carts for video games and everything. I like to preserve the old games. I mean, I know probably somewhere one of these is in a museum, but well, it's in our museum. <laughs> <laughs> and the last game we've got for you guys today has a pretty iconic character on the front of it for some of you. Some of you may not recognize who he is. And we also picked this up because of uh, Cinemassacre when they do board games. Mm -hmm. This this was uh, this, this was featured on there. This was, and so we were super excited to find it. And I found it at a flea market for five bucks. First of all, I never pass up a board game for five bucks usually. But this had one of my favorite actors on here from when I was a kid, Vincent Price. I don't know how, how many of you remember Vincent Price, but uh, probably the most recent thing the man has done would be Edward Scissorhands. I don't know if he did anything after. I think that may have been. That may have been his last thing. Uh, he's very iconic of horror movies from back in the day. But it's, it, this one's a lot of fun. It comes with two of these, sorry. The pieces are rattling a bit, but two plastic um, game pieces that each of you get to hold, kind of like Battleship. Um, and then when you open it up, I can get it to open. We've got your letters here so that you can spell out your word on the inside. And then on the outside, you're going to rotate it based on how many rights or wrongs you've got and basically build your hangman. And on the inside here, it does show the hangman thing so that you know what, you know, oh, there's a head, there's a leg, whatever. So that the outside, you can see that you are almost dead or not dead. Um, I do I like how it came with a uh, list of words. It did. It came with some words in case you weren't quite sure what word to use or how to spell words. Uh, this is pre-internet. So it's kind of like how I think a lot of Scrabble games will come with a, thoth a come with a thesaurus. <laughs> Tripping over that word. Some games will come with a thesaurus. This one's coming with some helpful hints on which letter to go for. Eight letter words, five letter words. I believe this was in the eighties. Um, I think if I might have a copy. Nope, there's nothing on the back. <laughs> Um, but like I said, I think it... 1976. 76. I, I said 86. I was 10 years off. I had the... So, that's what I was thinking. So yeah, it's a fun game. I got it 
we, he, I think he noticed it because of the Board because James Because of Cinema things. Massacre and Board James. But yeah. uh, I was super excited because of Vincent Price on the cover. You don't really see a whole lot of actors on board games. <laughs> and, I mean, it, he has nothing to do with Hangman. He didn't do a movie called Hangman or anything like that. It's just they wanted somebody cool, I guess, on the cover of it. But I thought that was a lot of fun. So maybe we can go play some Hangman. Let us know if you want to see a closer look of any of these games. Uh, obviously, these are very typical games. You know, yeah, most we... people are familiar with how Clue and, you know, versions of Monopoly work. And yeah, Hangman isn't sure. exactly... Yeah, everyone's played <laughs> Hangman in junior high It's, it's or not grade quite school. rocket brain. <laughs> but uh, uh, if there's anything here that you would like to see a closer look at or anything behind us, we would love to share that with you. So let us know in the comments below. Yeah, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and like this video and subscribe to our channel. And we will see you at the next Tabletop game, game guys. <laughs> Alright, bye nerdlings. Give it to them, Will. Play more games! <laughs> Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> I love you, Will. I'm sorry.